Hi, um, good morning. Uh, welcome to our fifth week here at Geelong's gym for another Hours Pilates class. My name is Belinda and I will be taking you through the session. Uh, we're going to start with a very, very quick posture alignment. So um, in other videos, I've given you quite a detailed description of how to do this. So I'm, I am going to move through the process quite quickly this time. So we start with the feet. Uh, about hip width apart and they're looking nice and centered. We're going to shake the knees and make sure they're off lock. We tune to the pelvis and the spine. So our aim is to create neutral pelvis, neutral spine. So we're stacking through the base of the vertebrae. We're making sure the hips don't sit back or forward. So we don't really want to feel the lower back um, in this posture. When we find this position, we're actually going to connect to our deep so deeper core muscles respond better when the spine's in line. If the pelvis is sitting slightly outside of that, we don't get as good activation. So let's um, tune to those muscles now. So we're tuning to the hip bones. We visualize a line going from one hip bone to the other. And then we scoop the belly in behind the line. And hopefully you notice when I did that, I didn't actually move my spine. So I'm maintaining the lateral gap in my waist and my ribs are neutral, so they're nice and relaxed. I then let my hands come by side, my palms in, I relax my neck and shoulders, and I check my head stays within my center of gravity. So this makes sure that I don't feel pressure on the neck. So from this a nice aligned posture, we're gonna to start to connect to our Pilates breath. So we take a deep breath in through the nose. The exhale's an audible sigh through the mouth. Let's try that again. Inhale. Exhale. And now we move through a spinal roll. I can't talk today. A spinal roll. So this um, is a great way to connect to your whole body. We do this at the start and the end of the class as a little test to see how our body feels and see if we change through the process of the class. So we take a deep breath in. We hinge the weight a little forward and then we exhale and roll down. We inhale at the bottom, exhale, we roll all the way up. So we're coming back into our Pilates alignment as we come up. So it's quite a conscious roll up. Again, inhale, hinge forward, exhale, come down. And you'll notice, notice hopefully when I get to the bottom, I release my neck and hip. Inhale, exhale, I roll up and realign. And just one more time, inhale, hinge forward, exhale, roll down. Inhale, exhale, I roll up. And then I just take a moment to reassess my posture to really connect with my body. Okay, let's transition down to the mat. So we'll take a step forward. We're transitioning through a deep squat. So just check as you're coming down to the mat that there's you've got a little bit of space. So there's no obstacles that are going to prevent you lying down and moving your arms and legs around. So we take a deep breath in. We take the arms up. I'm going to exhale. I'm going to sit back to my mat. And then I'm going to take my left hand back, followed by right, and I gently sit down. And we're going to start with just a really gentle stretch in the hips. So um, the reason we like to stretch the hips at the start of the class is so that we release some of the activation. So a lot of scientific studies have shown that stretching before exercise is really good if you've got very tight overactive muscles. So what it does, it actually switches off the activation so that uh, we get more benefit out of perhaps some of those weaker muscle groups. So we take a deep breath, we lift up. Exhale, I'm gonna fold just a little way. So I'm not putting a lot of pressure out um, on my legs rather. It's just very, very gentle. So remember we are warming up, so we don't want to force otherwise your hips will talk to you, but not in a good way. They'll start complaining, I would say. And if you feel comfortable and you have the flexibility through the spine, you might bring your elbows or your hands down. And just take a few deep breaths, try and relax the shoulders. So we're also going to take a stretch for the hamstrings 
And we are actually going to do a little bit of work on hamstring flexibility today. So let's um, start nice and gently. If you're very tight, please bend your knees just a little, or you can even place a cushion or a towel just underneath the knees, just so it takes the pressure off the back of the thighs. So we inhale, we lift. Exhale, I'm going to fold, I'm going to walk my hands just to where they feel good. So it might be your thighs, it might be your shins, it might even be your feet. Now I'm going to release my shoulders. I'm going to keep gazing to my toes, just so I'm not rounding the top of my spine. And I'm just going to take a few breaths here. Remember, the aim isn't to create strain here. We're just easing our way in. One more thing, so I'm going to take my hands back and I'm going to bend my knees. So this is more of a dynamic stretch. My feet are about hip width apart and I'm going to use my fingertips to lift through my spine. So I'm bracing my belly, I'm drawing the ribs in just enough so they're neutral, so they're not flaring out. I inhale centre, I exhale, I drop my knees to the right. Inhale. Exhale, drop left and try and press this hip a little forward so that will help to open hip flexor very gently. Inhale, exhale, so it's a very gentle spinal twist here. Inhale, exhale, so lifting the torso up, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, just a couple more. And then coming all the way over to the right. Now push the hip forward and hold. Good. Let's change sides of the way over. Lift up through the spine and breathe. Alright, coming to centre, let's come onto our back. So as usual, I'm going to turn my feet to one side of my mat so that when I look at my screen, I can do that without putting too much strain on the neck. Uh, as usual, we will come down to the mat slowly, so feel free to bend your knees if you need a little bit more lower back protection. Otherwise, the feet come out, I take a deep breath in. Exhale, I'm going to come down just a little way. And I pause, inhale. Exhale, I come further. Inhale. Exhale, I come so I'm almost in contact with my mat. And then I'm going to take five counts slow this time. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. All right, so let's take our hands by side, palms up. I'm going to bend my knees, place the feet flat on the floor. Um, as always, I want a centered base so my feet are hip width and they're not turning or as much as I, I can without putting strain through my ankles. My knees look centered and they don't look like they're flopping out or coming in together. So they're slightly apart and centered. I tune to my pelvis and I give this lots of attention because really, most of you tune into Pilates because you're wanting to strengthen through the core. And the, and the way to do that is to really build a good connection with the deeper core muscles. So to do that, we need our back in contact with the mat, but we need it pressing lightly down. So um, some of you may find that you've got this very, very pronounced curve. I know that's blind, hello. <laughs> um, so uh, we want to release this because this makes it really difficult to switch on the deeper core. So what it generally means in terms of our posture is that our lower backs are very, very tight and overactive, while the core muscles are generally a little bit weak. So we want to set that balance right. So we're pressing down. I'm not forcing down, because I don't want to cause imbalance in the opposite direction. And I'm going to lightly draw in the belly. So that same scoop, one hip bone to the other, we draw the line, we scoop in. But I've got the lateral gap in my waist and my ribs are relaxed, they're neutral. Good. So keep breathing while you maintain that connection. And we take the hands by side with palms up, the shoulders are relaxed. 
and then I just want my head centered. So I do tuck my chin, but only to that point where the front of the neck is quite soft. I don't want to make tension through the front of the neck muscles. So just make sure the head, the neck is relaxed, and then we align nose with navel. So let's breathe just to reset. So we take a deep breath in. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Good. We're actually going to start with a flexibility focus today. So I'm going to bring my knees up 90 degrees. I'm going to start with my shoulders down, and this is to help all of you out that, that do have quite a bit of issue through your neck. So if you experience quite a bit of neck strain, you might choose to stay with this position where your head is on the floor. So we take a deep breath in. I'm going to exhale, extend my left leg, and my, I'm going to hold my right shin, or maybe under my knees if I can't reach the shin. And then I'm going to draw this knee into the armpit. Notice my legs extended, but it's not down. And this is because I do want to keep my back down. So if this leg loads the core, this stretches out through the buttocks and the hips. So I exhale. Inhale, I'm going to switch. And exhale, draw in. Now I'm quite conscious as I draw the knee in to relax my shoulders down. Because otherwise what tends to happen is we round up. So we do want to relax as much as we can. If you do lack a little bit of flexibility, especially... Um, through that upper body, you might find reaching your shins quite difficult. So just take whatever modification you need to, to be able to keep your shoulders on the ground. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Now I'm going to take a slight variation. I'm actually going to lift my head up. So I'm thinking forehead, tucking towards the knee. So I tuck my chin, and this just takes that pull of the neck. So I may have mentioned in previous videos that head is quite heavy. And when the head sits back, we get that pull of gravity on the neck. So this is when we do feel a lot of neck strain. So those of you who don't like this position because of the neck, work a little more on tucking. And if that still doesn't work for you, you put the head down. So I'm just going to be quiet and breathe with this exercise for a little while so you get the breath. So I inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. I'll do one more each side like this. Then I'll add a percussive pulse, a double pulse. Now pulsing the closest knee. I'm trying not to pulse the extended leg because that's where I get my core strength. If I bounce, I'm going to bounce through the spine. And lose my core connection. So let's keep bouncing. We're working on the flexibility on the pulse. One more. Now hold here, take three breaths. You might lower the foot for now. Now if you can, lift the foot slightly so you might need to bend the knee for this. We're going to lift the left leg up and down like this. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Again. One more. Let's change sides. And we hold the stretch, three breaths. Relax in the shoulders. If you need to put your head down, you're welcome to. And then I hover my foot. I can bend my knee if I need to. Let's lift that right leg up and down. So I'm really conscious to keep my back on the mat. So I'm not bouncing. I'm not letting that arch creep in. And relax, good. 
All right, so let's go to a little bit of hamstring flexibility. So it's going to be a similar movement, but this time with straight legs. So for those of you who are very, very tight in the hamstring, which may be a lot of you, just bend your knees so you can do the same sort of knee movement or leg movement with and bend in the knees. In fact, let's all start with that because I just think it might be a little bit nicer for you. So we take a deep breath in. On the exhale, I'm going to split the legs. Now, we're really focusing on this leg that's close to us. So we're wanting to draw in. I'm holding underneath on my thigh, so I'm not holding on the knee joint itself. And I'm drawing in. I'm trying to get a little bit of length through the thigh. And then the inhale, I switch the legs. So I'm inhaling at the midpoint, and then exhale, I'm drawing in. Inhale. Exhale, and I'm trying to work on keeping my shoulders down. They're a little tight today, so I must admit I'm struggling a little. But just be, just be aware of it. A lot of Pilates is about reconnecting to the body. So remember, Pilates is that mind-body experience. It's, it's all about conscious movement. So we're wanting to move consciously. We're wanting to move with good awareness. Now I'm going to try a few reps with my legs straight. So it's going to go like this. So I'm not taking my bottom foot all the way down. And the reason, again, just like the last exercise, is that I want to work on core. So I'm keeping my back down. I'm only taking that bottom leg as low as I can, keeping my back down. So if it's lifting, chances are I've gone a little bit low. And again, I'm going to do a few with my head up. You don't have to. You can stay with the head down. If your head is lifted, we're tucking the chin. Think of drawing your shin or your forehead towards your knee. Or shin towards forehead, whatever works for you. One right side. And just like before, we go to percussive breath. And at just like before, I'm pulsing the leg closest and I'm trying to keep the bottom leg still. Because if I bounce this leg, I'm going to bounce from the spine and I'm going to lose the core work. Now you can bend the knee and place it down, or if you can keep your back down, roll with it. And either lift the head up and hold, or relax down. Three breaths. Relax the neck and shoulders. And let's change sides. All right, let's bring our knees back to a 90 degree position. So this way involves a little bit of upper and lower body. So I'm going to take my arms out. I'm going to take a deep breath in. On the exhale, I'm going to start with my legs about 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is kind of that, that midpoint between that 45 uh, and upright, that 90 degree angle. Um, and this is just enough to put pressure on the core without arching the spine. So if you can go a bit lower, if you need to go a bit higher, that's, that's quite okay. So 60 degrees, exhale. And then inhale, I'm going to curl my body in. Exhale, I expand the body, I keep my back down. So you have to work harder because we're adding the arms. Inhale in. Exhale, I'm bringing my back to the mat. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Try and relax the muscles in the face as you breathe. So we're relaxing the jaw. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Good. Three more times. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, 
One more time. Exhale. And relax. Well done. Okay. Last couple of exercises in this position. So this one I'm going to extend my legs for. Uh, so when you extend the legs, we need to work a little more consciously through the feet. So if you have any issues with ankles, um, this one you might find brings it out because we might rotate the ankles and we might take the body out of alignment. So just try and put a little pressure on the ball of the foot so that your foot centers. And we do need to work a little bit more on keeping that back in contact with the floor. You will find it's a lighter connection and that's okay as long as you have a connection. So you still need to scoop the belly and you need to be conscious when we move the legs, which we will, <laughs> that, um, that you are keeping the back down. So I'm going to take my palms up because this opens my shoulder. If you do find that you, you do flip the palms, it is okay. It is, it is cheating a little bit because it's using the arms to, to try and push the back down. Um, but I'd rather your back is down. So make that your priority. But I'm going to do it with palms up. So I take a deep breath in. Exhale, I'm going to skip belly. Now I'm going to inhale, I'm going to lift my right leg. Now it's up to you how high you go. Again, if you tighten the hamstrings, you'll probably bend your knee. And then exhale, I lower. Inhale, I'm actually going to try and get my leg 90 degrees. It may not get there, but that's okay. Exhale. Inhale. Now when I do this, I'm actually working really hard through my pelvis. So there's a little work through the buttocks to try and maintain pelvic stability because what tends to happen, a lot of us don't have good stability through the pelvis. A lot of us tend to be very tight in our hip flexors and very weak through the buttocks, through the glute muscles. Um, so what you might find is when you're moving your legs, you're actually getting a lot of lateral movement. So this is this rocking movement side to side. We're working on moving slow enough so that we control the movement. So it's all about maintain your Maintain your control right through. Move slow enough so you can identify any of those movements. And a lot of the movements we refer to in Pilates, the ones that we're trying to control for, are very subtle. So they're, they're movements that take good body awareness. Okay, we're often used to in exercise programs, we focus on these really big um, gestures of movement. But it's the small movements that give away uh, the strength of our stabilizers. And we want to strengthen the stability. The stabilizers are the muscles that hold your body in place. They're really important, especially if you want to move longer throughout your life, because they protect the body. I'm going to do a couple more, so one more each side. I hope you're going okay. I hope your hamstrings are okay. And then I'm going to try both legs. So I'm going to inhale, I'm going to lift both legs up. I am taking my feet to the floor, but I, I'm working very, very hard on keeping my back down. So for a lot of you that are struggling with this, bend your knees so you can come to this position. And then exhale, lower. Inhale. Exhale, I'm going back to my straight legs now. Inhale. Exhale, really working hard to keep my back down. There's often that temptation if you are going all the way to the floor to release the back. So, but that's where we have to work harder. The, the most load on the core happens when you're at the bottom of the range. This is where your core works hardest because there's more pressure on the spine. You're taking your legs further away from your body center. And this is when the hard work happens. I'm going to do it four more times. I'm trying to relax my shoulders. And I'm relaxed. Okay. Now I'm lying. I said that was the last thing we're going to do before I change position, but I'm going to sneak one more exercise in. We're going back to our split legs that we did before. The focus isn't so much on the hamstrings now, so you can bend the knees a little. This is a little variation on a cross foot, so we're actually working the obliques now. So we take the legs up um, with bent or straight legs, whatever you prefer, and let's just start to get that movement we had when we were doing the hamstring legs, so that scissor movement. So inhale, exhale. Split, inhale, we hit the midway point and exhale, split. 
my back is down, hopefully. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my hands behind my head to support. I do work at keeping my elbows back. I don't force them back, they're comfortable. But the aim is not to focus on the head. And what I'm going to do is turn to the leg that's closest to me. So I'm keeping my elbow back, it's the closest leg. Inhale, I switch. Exhale, I turn. Inhale, I switch. Exhale, I turn. Good. So I'm not pulsing my legs, just my upper body, hopefully. Four more. And right legs, hold on. All right, let us work on our side now. So it's slightly different position, so I'm not coming all the way over. I'm just coming at a slight angle, so I'm going to lift the back buttock, my back buttock off the mat. I'm taking my knees about midway, so they're not all the way down, they're about 45. Okay, my, my hand is in line with shoulder, and I'm going to take the other hand back. And to start with, I'm going to extend the top leg only. So I take a deep breath in, I'm pressing this side of my waist into the mat, and my shoulders are down. So the shoulders are going to return to the mat every time I come down. So you'll feel like the lower body's just in a very subtle rotation, like we started with when we were seated. Inhale. Now exhale, I'm going to tuck the knee in. So I'm curling in towards my knee, and maybe I touch my calf, maybe I touch my ankle, maybe I touch my toes, maybe not. <laughs> Inhale. Waist down to the mat. Exhale up. I see if I tuck my chin, and again, it's just to take that pull of gravity off the neck, so I'm trying to protect my neck by tucking the chin in a little more. Inhale, my shoulders come down. Exhale. Now this is the modified version, so the next level is to take both legs out. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Now you can do this without the legs altogether, if, especially if you're new to Pilates, you might just focus on the shoulder movement or just the leg movement if you prefer. Let's do four more like this. And remember there's always this version to come back to. And of course I'm going to percussive breath. Triple pulse today. Once again, the pulse comes from my upper body, so I'm really wanting it to come from the core. And the pulse is there to try and really empty the lungs. So I'm squeezing the air out of the centre of the body. And I'm encouraging those oblique muscles to get just a little more activation. Two more times. Now I'm going to alter a little bit, so let's slow down again. Must be mean today. And I'm going to split my feet so my bottom leg is coming forward. You don't have to have the split if you don't want to. Exhale up. Inhale, split always the bottom leg forward. Exhale up. Inhale, split. Exhale up. Inhale, split. Let's do two more like this. How are we going? Hope you're managing to dodge the furniture in your house. <laughs> and let's go for the triple pulse again. 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 Almost there. Last one. Good. 
Shall we change sides? <laughs> I bet you're looking forward to doing it all again. All right, so when I set this up, I like to come down to my back. So just turn yourself around so you can see your screen and then lie down and make yourself comfortable. Same setup as the other side. So the arm closest to the screen is coming out um, and I'm turning my knees just slightly. So I'm on the front buttock. I'm not on the side of my hip. The back body is up. This hand's going to come back and I do work on keeping my shoulders down or bringing the shoulders to the mat whenever my upper body lowers. And this side, the front side, the side closest to your screen, um, the waist is going to press to the mat. So this maintains our core connection. Let's take the top leg out. How you doing? Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. You might find one side's a little easier than the other. Inhale. Exhale. Remember, you have this single leg version that you can stay with. You don't have to go to the next option. But I'm going to take it. Both legs out. Exhale, both legs in. Inhale, both legs out. I'm pressing my waist to the mat, bringing my shoulders down. Again. Good. Two more times. And then hello, percussive breath. Remember, it's a triple. Triple up. Now, I'm not bouncing my neck because that's not where I want the focus. It all comes from my waist. down, inhale, exhale, now let's split the feet, flexibility while you work on your core, and you're fine when the legs go out, maybe, but it just might target your core a little differently, it's just another challenge we can add, it might not be the challenge for you today, and that is okay, it's about listening to your body, doing the version of these exercises that resonates with you, where you're getting the benefit, you're getting the challenge, but you're not getting any agitation or strain. So part of this process is sometimes ignoring what's happening on your screen and taking modifications. It's all about doing what's best for your body. And I probably threw a few more reps in there. Let's go to percussive, so inhale, triple. Inhale, triple. Inhale, triple. Inhale, triple. Two more. And last one. And relax. Oh, good. Let's come on to our belly. So we're focusing on the back of the body. going to come down. I'm going to bring my hands in close today. And I'm just going to check that my body, my lower body centered. So remember no turning in the feet, the thighs are centered on the mat. And we do press and anchor the pelvis down so that we get the support from the buttocks. So the glutes are just as important as the core muscles, especially when we're on the belly, because a lot of the anchoring is through the pelvis. Um, and it's the glutes that help anchor us in this position. Now I'm going to keep the hands in. My hands are forward of my shoulder. I'm going to squeeze or almost like pull my elbows back towards my hips. And this will hopefully draw your shoulder blades down the back and relax the neck muscles. Now when you can and when you're aware of what's going on, try to keep your head centered. And the aim of the neck and the head is always to keep the vertebrae of the neck in line with the rest of the spine. So we're not wanting to leave our head behind because this creates a lot of neck tension. But we don't want to do the opposite where we're way up here. It's just about tucking the chin, maintaining alignment. Let's start simply with the upper body. So I'm going to inhale, lift on this one. So scoop your belly and inhale, lift up, open the chest and think of squeezing your elbows down. 
towards the back of your back. And then exhale, lower. Inhale, squeeze your waist down. Exhale, lower. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Now I'm going to just keep working on this movement today, but I'm going to take a few variations. So the next variation is to take your hands by side. So our palms are down when we do this. And again, we want to walk, think of pushing your fingertips towards your feet. So again, we're getting that draw down through the shoulders and the shoulder blades. So my hands are going to stay down to start with. So I inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. So how's your lower body doing? Is it still centered? I noticed my feet turned. <laughs> so I've just sent them a little reminder to get back to work. And then I'm going to take my hands to just the little base of the lower back. So I'm going to work a little harder on keeping my shoulders down. Inhale, lift. So now that we're not using the arms, you might find that you don't lift as high. So this is just a little modified version, especially for those people who are really tight in your shoulders. Um, for those of you who want a little more stretch in your shoulders, you can take your palms together and draw them down the spine. So same thing, inhale up, exhale lower. Inhale up, exhale lower. And now I'm going to add the legs. Inhale, I lift up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, I lift. Exhale, lower down. Again. One more. Now just take a little break, so your shoulders might need a little break as well. Now we're going to do the same thing, but I'm going to bend my knees. I'm actually going to cross the ankles, so I'm going to cross right over left. doesn't matter as long as you remember to do the other side. Right. Crossing, don't flare the knees out too much. We want to squeeze them in and keep them hip width apart. Now you can choose your upper body position. It can be here, 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 or here. I'll try to do a few reps of each so you can see the options. So inhale, I lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. So just keep going with whatever upper body position you chose. I'm just going to play with a few of them just so I can demonstrate some options for you. So I might put my hands here for a couple of reps. My hands are on my buttocks, not my lower back, just because I don't want to trigger my lower back to overactivate. And maybe I do this for a couple of reps. All feeling good. Hopefully you're feeling your glutes activate because the knees are lifting slightly off the mat. And then maybe I'll try this. So you might have had a little play with the different arm positions. And maybe you found one or two that you like that you want to stick with. Or maybe you just want to mix it up a little bit. But you try to do a few reps of each. So let's switch the legs over. And let's just do a few reps in whatever version you prefer. Feel free to change when you need to. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So try to remember to keep your neck and head in line with the spine. Try to, keep, try to press the palms towards each other if you can. So this will really give that openness to the chest and the shoulders. Four more times. One more. And I release, my palms are up. I'm going to take my left ear to the mat today, relaxing my shoulders, and just a few deep breaths here. Inhale. Exhale. 
And one more. Inhale. Really let it go this time. Good. I take my hands on the shoulders. I'm going to push up onto my hands and knees. And I'm going to take a few breaths in the cat stretch. So I ground the spine and I hold it. Excuse my cough cramp. <laughs> Happens on these chilly mornings. And I come to neutral, I bring my big toes together, I take my knees apart, my hands come forward, and I sit to the mat. So remember, shell stretch is your friend. You want it to work for you and just to be a release for the body. So sit where you're comfortable, relax your head in the best way you can, whether or not that means bringing your hands close and resting your head there um, is quite okay. So let's take three breaths. The last one, really let the breath go this time. Good. All right, we are going to play with a hover this morning. Uh, so I'm sure you've, you've done these before. Uh, many people call them planks. Uh, but we're really going to set this up Pilates style. So a lot of people, when they, when they plank or hover, they, they come all the way down to the belly and they, they scoop the belly up. But what happens when we do that is we actually load the lower back. So this is the authentic Pilates hover without lower back activation. Well, fingers crossed anyway. So I'm going to place my hands on the shoulders and I'm going to bring, which I might walk a little bit to the top of my mat, I'm going to bring my elbows down. So this will place my elbows underneath my shoulders. And then from here, I'm going to walk my knees back. Now, I'm walking my knees back to a position where my hips come in line with my shoulders. So this will um, put a little bit more load on the core. Now, hopefully you're noticing that my back is level. So I keep my back level by drawing the belly in, so making sure that my back doesn't dip, my hips don't go to the lower shoulders. That can actually, that's when we get ourselves in trouble because that puts the load on the lower back. I don't want them higher because otherwise I don't get any work. So you're really trying to find that middle position. And of course, I, I want to keep my head up because if it's down, I'm going to feel my neck. So we're pushing up out of our hands and our elbows. So this will keep the upper body strong. It takes the pressure out of your shoulder joint and your neck muscles. So let's take three breaths here and then we'll play. So drawing the belly in, making sure that your back maintains its flat level position, just like a tabletop. Now what I'm going to do is tuck my toes. And we're just going to play a little. So I'm going to take an inhale. I'm going to lift my right knee off the mat. And then exhale, I'm going to lower. And then I do the same on the left. And then if I'm feeling adventurous, I do both. So we're going to do single, single, double. So inhale, right knee. Inhale, left knee. Inhale, both knees. Don't feel pressure to do both if it doesn't feel good on the body. Again, inhale, right knee. Inhale, left knee. Inhale, both knees. Now we're going to do this again, and this time you're going to pay a little more attention to your pelvis to make sure there's no rock or shift. Ready? So we're bracing, we're holding the pelvis still. Inhale. Other side, inhale. Exhale. Both sides. One more time. No, I really want to do it again, so I'm going to do it one more time. And to come out of my hover or my plank, I actually come up, I walk my hands closer, and I come back this way. So again, I'm not dropping my belly to the mat. Good. 
apologies for the extra set there, but I was just enjoying myself too much. <laughs> it's true. Bring my feet all the way back around. Yeah, look up like that. Um, let's just come down quick, a little faster this time. So feel free to bend your knees. Inhale, exhale. And I'm going to leave you to try to get your posture in balance. So remember all those points like the feet, the spine, the hands, the neck. And don't forget to spend a little time activating your core. So just see if you can feel this posture and find it. And then connect your breath. And now I'm going to take my knees at 90 degrees. So we're going to do something we call bicycle. Um, now I'm a little strict on the bicycle. So it is something we use at the Castle Breath Hall. Uh, but I want you to connect to the movement and to connect to your core. So the aim of the bicycle, it's all about as we often discuss in Pilates, it's about the areas of the body we're trying to keep still. If you add speed and you bounce through this movement, we're actually going to lose the purpose of the exercise, which is to activate and strengthen your core muscles. So yes, the legs move, but we want to maintain spine. So I'm going to start with my head down, my shoulders down, my belly in and my back down. And I'm just going to start just breathing in a nice natural rhythm. And I'm pedaling my feet. So notice when I pedal, there is hip movement. It's not all coming from the knees. Um, if you just move from your knees, you'll get probably lots of things happening in your quadriceps, but not much of anything else. So I'm pedaling. I'm taking quite a big movement. The more you extend, of course, the more the load goes on the core. So just make sure you can keep the back down. Feet higher will take the pressure off as usual. And then what we do is we actually do add a percussive breath. So it goes like this. Just because we're using the percussive breath doesn't mean it has to be quick. So still prioritize the stillness in your body over doing lots of reps quickly. It's just more benefit for you. And then we pause. We're going to do the movement backwards. So same thing. So let's just breathe naturally and get the movement first. And it might feel a little bit weird pedaling backwards, but it's good for us, good for our brain. <laughs> so get a little bit of rewiring happening by challenging the body with a different movement. But it's also good for the body. It balances the body. We're getting a little more glute, a little more hamstring activation here. And let's once again add the percussive breath. So you'll notice with the percussive breath, the movement is more rhythmic but that doesn't mean it's quick or bouncy. Four more times. And relax. So what we're going to do is get in a pattern where we do 10 forward, 10 back. We're going to start the first close set with our head down. So 10 percussive breaths forward. Take a deep breath in. Let's go. And pause, let's go back. And pause. So the next set I'm going to do with my head up. So the hands can be here or supporting the head, whatever feels good. I might show you a bit of both. So deep breath in. Let's go. Pause. Let's get back. Pause. I'll do your set with my hands here. Pause. Let's get back. And pause. Now do one more set. Having your head in your hands wherever you want. Pause, let's get back. And relax, follow. Deep 
breaths. All right, I hope you're up for one more exercise lying on your back. So to start with, I'm gonna take my feet down, my arms down. Now we call this exercise 100. So really what it is, it's a crunch and hold, um, but what we do is we use the Picasso breath. Some people like to pulse the arms. I, I'll add it, <laughs> but I, I only recommend doing it if the pulse is very, very subtle. If you're bouncing and then suddenly your upper body's moving too, don't worry about the arms. The arms aren't the beneficial thing. It just helps us keep a little bit of rhythm and work on, on that thing about controlling the range and the muscles. Um, but the aim is to get the whole within the brain. So we take a deep breath in, X on your left, and I take 10 pulses. Inhale lower, exhale up. Let's go inhale. Now inhale lower, I'm going to take my knee 9 degrees, same thing. Exhale. Inhale. Inhale. I'll do it again like this. Exhale. Inhale. So if you're not moving the arms, it's here. Inhale. I might try a couple of sets with my legs further. You don't have to take this option. Inhale. Let's go. Inhale. Exhale. Let's go. Inhale. Exhale. Holding. And release. I actually lost count there, so we might have got away with a few less reps. So letting the head go, letting the body go. Good. Let's just finish with a gentle spinal twist here. So take the arms out, the palms are up. I'm going to cross my left knee over right and I'm tucking my foot behind the calf. This is just to enhance the twist. You don't have to let the leg cross. Uh, so I take an inhale, exhale. I'm going to take my legs all the way to the right and then I'm just going to wiggle my hips back so they're in line with spine and work on keeping my shoulders down. Now your head can be centered or you can look a little to the left side and just take maybe three breaths here. Yeah. And then coming to center, using my core strength to lift, I'm going to switch to the legs. So notice I do wiggle my hips so they line with spine and I'm coming all the way over. I'm working, I'm keeping my shoulders down. My feet touch the ground. Knees just rest where they feel good. And I come to center. Now you can choose to take your knees to one side and sit up, but I'm going to take a little rock and roll along my spine like this. And I'm coming up. Good. All right. So. We're going to revisit the stretch we started with. So let's take the feet together. Let's lift up through spine and exhale. We're going to tip. So just gently, hopefully you find your spine's a little longer this time and you can get a bit more range. And just like before, if you want to take your hands forward or your elbows down, you're welcome to. Just work on relaxing the neck and shoulders. So one more stretch, we take the feet straight out. So revisiting this just to see if we've got a bit more range this time. So inhale up, exhale, we lower. So hopefully again, you're getting a little bit more length in spine and maybe even getting further in your range. And release. All right, 
let's make our way up to standing. So we're going to set the feet again just a little wider, so they're about shoulder width. I bring my weight into feet and release my left hand, follow by right, and exhale, I press up. All right, let's quickly again go through our posture alignment, just so we're checking in, we're tuning in, and we're really working on that body awareness. So let's start with the feet. So noticing where they're standing, making sure they're centered, they feel centered, we feel an even distribution of weight. We shake the knees and make sure they're soft. We tune to the pelvis, so we're wanting to stack through the base of the vertebrae and just double check that the hips aren't sitting back or forward. So from here, we're activating the deep core. So tune to your hip bones, visualize a line going from one hip bone to the other, and then scoot your belly in behind the line without holding your breath and without moving the spine. So we've got a lateral gap in the waist, our ribs are nice and relaxed. Now I take my hands by side, I turn my palms in, and I lightly work on opening my shoulders without force. And then I tune into where my neck and my head are positioned, and I check my head stays within my center of gravity. So it's creating this nice long line through the neck where the vertebrae are stacked on top of the rest of the spine. So ideally we're wanting to release all neck tension. So in this posture, try and observe and add the breath. So take a deep breath in, exhale, release. And one more time, inhale. Exhale. So let's revisit our spinal roll and just see if it feels different at this point of the class. So we take a deep breath in, we hinge forward, and we use the out breath to roll all the way down, really softening through the body, bring the weight a little to the toes, and release the neck and head at the bottom. Inhale. Exhale, roll up. Come back to your Pilates posture. Two more times. Inhale. Hinge forward. Come down. Inhale. Exhale. Coming all the way up. One more time. Setting posture, tuning in, just checking you came back to alignment. Um, thank you once again for joining me. Uh, please try to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It just makes accessing these videos a lot easier for you. You can like these videos, you can comment on these videos, and you can pause these videos and watch them in your own time. Thank you once again. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Well done.